All right, this is part six of our notes from chapter seven, VLE of Pure Fluids. In this set of notes, we'll focus on calculating fugacity and fugacity coefficient. And so we start out with our definition from the last set of notes. For an isothermal process, mu1 minus mu1 naught is equal to RT log F1 over F naught. So mu1 corresponds to my chemical potential of component one, F1 is my fugacity of component 1. Okay, So mu1 and F1 correspond to my chemical potential and fugacity at my conditions of interest. So this is the value I want to know at a given, say, temperature and pressure. Okay. Mu1 naught and F1 naught correspond to my reference state, chemical potential and fugacity. So our restriction is that mu1 and mu1 naught need to be at the same temperature. Um, F1 and F1 naught need to be at the same temperature. Okay, so our two states need to be at the same temperature. Okay, they need not be at the same pressure, and when it comes to a mixture, for a mixture they need not be at the same composition. Okay, the only restriction is that they need to be at the same temperature. Now our two standard state values can't be chosen independent of each other. Right, and so what I mean by this is once they define our reference state. So if we have a pure component system, and I take my reference state to be my system at one bar, okay, for example. So once I pin down the conditions of this standard state, I also pin down the conditions of this standard state, right? These correspond to the same state. Just like mu1 and f1 correspond to the same state, mu1 naught and f1 naught correspond to the same state. Okay, so once I choose one, the other is fixed. For a pure component system, chemical potential and molar Gibbs free energy are one and the same. So I could equivalently write this as, you know, difference in uh, molar Gibbs free energies. And remember this is at constant T, so I could equivalently divide through by RT, and I could get it in terms of um, dimensionless molar Gibbs free energies. It's cool. Okay. So these are at the same temperature. Remember this is derived for an isothermal process. So if I take the differential then, I get the differential of G over RT is equivalent to the differential of log F. Okay, And so you know, if this isn't clear, if I take the differential of this um, right hand side, this is just G of my standard state. right? That's my reference state G over RT, it's just a constant, it's zero. Okay, If I go over here, log F over F naught is equivalent to log F minus log of F naught. I could break up the log term. Where again, F0 is just my standard state value, it's a constant, so the differential of log F0 is just zero, right? It's a constant. And that's where I get to this just being d log F. So dg over RT is equal to d log F, and that's equal to V over RT uh, dp, right? And where that comes from is, remember, um, our expression for, you know, differential of dimensionless G. Uh, at constant t, it's just v over rt dp. Okay. So my link to calculating then fugacity is uh, d log f is v over rt dp. So if I want to calculate fugacity, right, I just integrate the left hand and right hand side of my expression. Right. Easier said than done. Okay. So um, we can manipulate this to get fugacity coefficient, and one way to do it is. When deriving things, favorite math trick is often multiplying by 1 or, or adding 0. And so here we're going to add 0. Okay, so I subtract d log p from the left hand side and the differential of log p from the right hand side. So equivalent to if I had just added d log p um, minus d log p. Okay, so, um, so now I have d log f minus d log p, v over rt dp minus d log p. So if I look just at the right hand side, okay d log p, I could equivalently write as uh, 1 over p dp. Okay, So now this dp term is constant. Okay, And so what that allows me to do is, you know, I could factor out the dp and write this as v over rt minus 1 over p. And then on the left hand side, I can use my log rules to write this as d log f over p. Okay, So now the term in parentheses, this is v over rt uh, minus 1 over p. Okay, or equivalently, okay, if I factor out a 1 over p, this is pv over rt minus 1. So why the heck would I do this? Is well, 
Remember my equation of state for real fluids. The equation of state for real fluids is PV equals ZRT. Okay? And why I would do this over here is I remember in the ideal gas limit, or for an ideal gas, my fugacity is just equal to pressure for a pure component system. If we're a mixture, it would be partial pressure. All right? But for a pure component system, fugacity of an ideal gas is just equal to P. Okay? So F over P then gives me fugacity coefficient. So this left-hand side just becomes a differential of the log fugacity coefficient. This right-hand side, I could plug in Z minus 1. Okay? So I can write this as d log phi is equal to z minus 1 um, over p uh, dp. Okay, so if I want to calculate log phi, I could integrate the left and right hand side. Uh, and maybe if I wanted to choose you know, some convenient reference states, if I integrate the left hand side from the limit that p is equal to 0 to p, um, then, well, fugacity coefficient in the ideal gas limit, the limit that p goes to 0 is just uh, 1. All right, cool. Okay, but you know, we'll, we'll talk more about uh, these things later. Okay? So the limit that P goes to zero at constant T. Remember, this is at constant T. This is true for an isothermal process. Uh, all fluids approach ideal gas behavior. And so the ideal gas limit, my fugacity coefficient is just one. Okay? Cool. All right. So, you know, we could get this in an alternative way. So if we think back to chapter five, okay? Okay. Um, so this is going back to chapter five and talking about tricky residual properties. And you know, what we're going to get to is my residual Gibbs free energy is my actual relative to that of an ideal gas. Okay. So if I take my ideal gas to be a system at the same temperature, then you know, GR is equal to actual minus ideal gas at the same temperature. Differences in molar Gibbs free energies at the same temperature screwing to me log ratio fugacities, which in this case, since one's an ideal gas, uh, it would give me fugacity coefficient, right? And, and, and so we'll get all of this, okay? So we had residual volume. We were talking about our, um, you know, tricky differentials. And so we said that residual volume is difficult uh, because that's equal to, um, you know, limit. So residual volume in the ideal gas limit is limit P goes to zero VR. And so that's equal to RT limit is P goes to zero Z minus one over P. And so that's problematic in that we end up getting well, z is going to 1, so the numerator is going to 0, p is going to 0, um, so we have 0 over 0. So in order to evaluate residual volume, um, we had to use uh, our friend Le Hopital, right? And so, you know, what we found is um, residual volume would be the slope of this isotherm in the ideal gas limit. As residual volume is finite, it's not 0 in the ideal gas limit, and different for all fluids, okay? And, you know, where this was important is... You know, residual enthalpy, residual entropy, residual internal energy, those are all zero in the ideal gas limit. And molar volume is an exception to the rule. Okay. The other tricky one we looked at was residual molar gives free energy. Okay. Um, and, you know, what we found is that in the ideal gas limit, uh, the um, dimensionless molar gives free energy is equal to uh, negative infinity. Um, and, you know, so when I compute the residual, I get the difference in these two, um, you know, infinite terms. Um, but uh, it's finite, and we can just take it to be constant. Okay. But anyways, so you know what we found is our working equation to calculate gr was gr over rt is equal to integral from zero to p z minus one dp over p. Okay. Cool. Okay. And so again, was that constant t? So if we use our definition of fugacity, again, GR over RT is equal to G over RT minus G ideal gas over RT. So at constant temperature, so if we take G and G ideal gas or standard state to be at the same temperature, okay, well then, difference in molar gives free energy at constant T screams to me log ratio of fugacities, where this would be fugacity relative to fugacity of an ideal gas. Right? Remember, once I pin down this state, then this one is fixed. And so I'm taking my reference state to be an ideal gas at the same temperature, okay? So F over F ideal gas uh, just corresponds to, well, F I can write as phi times P. F of an ideal gas is just equal to P, all right? So this is log phi. So GR over RT is equivalent to log phi, all right? So log phi is GR over RT integral from 0 to P, Z minus 1 dP over P. Um, and, you know, we already looked back in, in 
chapter five, how we could use things like cubic equations of state to calculate uh, HR, SR, and then hence uh, GR. And so this is going to give us a way to directly calculate log V. Okay. All right. So if we resume where we left off, all right. So now we have this expression for d log f. We have this expression for d log v. Okay. Uh, so again, g minus g naughts r t log f over f naught. So um, our restriction is that these two states need to be at the same temperature, right? And then this state and this state correspond to the same state. So if we take our reference standard state to be an ideal gas. Okay, because I can you know, choose that standard state however I want. This becomes G minus G ideal gas, which is equivalent to GR. This becomes RT log F over F of an ideal gas. Fugacity of an ideal gas is just P. F over P is my definition of fugacity coefficient V. Okay, cool. Okay, so log V then is equivalent to GR over RT. I know that G is equal to H minus TS. So GR is equal to HR minus TSR. And so what that does for us again is in chapter five, we worked out expressions to calculate HR uh, using a cubic equation of state. Um, we also saw corresponding states theory, same thing for SR. And if we can calculate HR and SR, I can calculate GR. And if I can calculate GR, now I have log V, okay? And as we saw in the last set of notes, for a pure component system, my criteria of phase coexistence is equality of temperatures, pressures, and fugacity coefficients. All right, so now this gives me a mechanism if I want to solve, um, you know, or predict a temperature, say temperature at coexistence, um, it gives me a, a mechanism to, to do exactly that. Okay, but anyways, so why is this expression so great? Um, so enthalpy and, enthalpy and entropy are available in the steam tables. Um, we saw how we had generalized correlations for HR and SR. Um, and then again, in uh, chapter five, we saw how we could calculate HR and SR using uh, cubic equations of state. And so the fact that we had these nice relationships to calculate HR and SR from a cubic equation of state tells us we have nice expressions to calculate log phi. Okay. So generalized correlations. Uh, so if you remember, generalized correlations took the you know, form of, you know, HR over RTC, uh, if I recall correctly, was H naught plus omega uh, H1. Okay, um, so that's great. And so, since if I go back to the last slide, log phi is what's related to HR and SR. Okay, so correlation then would essentially be log phi is log phi naught plus omega, you know, log phi 1. Um, and how they're typically tabulated, though, is not log phi naught and log phi 1, but it's just phi naught and phi 1. Uh, so if I were to play around with log rules, this equivalently becomes log, or I'm sorry, phi is equal to phi naught times phi 1 raised to the omega. Right? Remember, this is a prefactor, so that'd be equivalent to bringing it in here and making it log phi 1 to the power of omega. Addition means I can multiply those two terms together. And if I take the exponential, right, phi is phi naught plus phi one raised to the power of omega. Okay, and there's essentially it's the same Lee Kessler tables. It's just you know they already exist for HR and SR. Combine them to form a new table for phi. Okay, and so you know our book provides uh, uh, graphs, uh, but tables um, also exist, and they're provided uh, on our Canvas page uh, as scanned from Smith, Abbott, and Van Ness. Okay, and then you know again. In uh, you know, chapter five, we worked out expressions for HR and SR for our cubic equations of state. So using those, what do you know? We can get a nice simplified equation for log phi. So the general procedure would be is if you know, say, temperature, pressure, your critical temperature, critical pressure, and a centric factor, right? If you think all the way back to chapter two, right, I can use that to calculate Z. So I can solve for the compressibility of my fluid uh, at a given temperature and pressure. Um, I would just need to know what phase I'm in if I get more than one root. And so then how this would proceed is once I have solved for that Z, once I know Z, um, I could then plug it into this nice expression to get phi, right? Where uh, big B prime and big A prime um, are just my um, parameters, right? That I can get from little a, little b, and in the case of A, I need my uh, uh, critical temperature and pressure as well, okay? Um, so cool, so we have a direct expression 
that for a given, say, temperature and pressure, I can calculate log phi uh, via an equation of state. Okay, so log phi is a function of T and P. Okay. Um, and again, where we'll use this eventually in our first project is this gives us a way then to calculate phase equilibria using a cubic equation of state. At, um, you know, phase equilibria have equality of temperatures, pressures, and uh, fugacity coefficient between my phases in equilibrium. And so what I can do is I can say specify temperature, and if I want to solve for PSAT, I can essentially just keep guessing values of PSAT until my cubic equation state gives me a fugacity coefficient for the liquid and vapor phase, which are equivalent to each other. Once that's satisfied, then I know P. All right, and that's where still it satisfies this criteria that if I have a pure component system of vapor liquid coexistence, I need only specify one intensive variable to pin down the state of my system. So I specify T, then I guess values of P until I find the P so that my isofugacity coefficient equation uh, is satisfied. Hey, how cool. Okay, and that's the end of the set of notes.